Quick disclaimer and safety note for this one, lasers and eyes are not friends. In this video, I'm only using low powered lasers, but I have still taken a number of steps to reduce the risk of flashing anyone. So don't try this at home without taking necessary precautions. The most important thing to understanding what light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation looks like is the light part. Lasers produce light, not really a surprise to anyone, but if you wanted to make them out of microwaves or out of x-rays, then you'd either get a maser or a zaser. Any which way, we're still dealing with electromagnetic radiation, which spreads out from sources, right? Doesn't travel in narrow uniform beams. Think of car headlights. The further you are away from the headlights, the more airy you can cover with the light. So what makes lasers different? Actually, are they different? Well, today, as a Mini 100 subspecial, we're gonna find out ourselves. If you look at any light source, then you can see the light spreading out. Whilst a simple observation, you might expect this to also apply to lasers since they're also producing light. So why don't they look like this? Well, maybe it's just due to scale. Maybe they do spread out, but it's just very, very slow. For this test, all you need to do is measure the diameter of a laser spot, then move further away and measure the diameter again. Well, we've got some lasers. So let's go do this test. Before we go over the top and do this on a large scale over a few hundred meters, let's start small, very small. To be precise, let's keep our laser 10 centimeters away from its target. Fire up the laser and get a photo to see what the spot size is. You can even see here, I've printed out a nice grid so that we can easily determine how big the spot is. Now. Let's move the target five meters away. Do the same thing. Lovely, I do like playing with lasers. I also have three different lasers, so we can try different colors, which will be important later. But which color do you think's the best? The red, the green, or the blue? So it looks like there is some spreading out. In fact, laser beam divergence is a well understood phenomenon. Laser beam profiles actually look like this. And divergence is measured by this angle, theta. Our red laser gave us the clearest results. So let's look at those first. At 10 centimeters, we had a spot size of 3.4 millimeters. And at five meters, it was eight millimeters. That gives us a divergence of about three minutes. Great. So what do we do with this? Well, we do the obvious. We go bigger, much bigger. Instead of five meters, let's try 270. All right, so we're out here for our nighttime test. All I've done is strap the laser to a tripod and we're gonna fire it from here all the way to the other side of the hill. I'll then get the distance off Google Maps and we'll see if we can work out what the laser divergence is from that. We've got a nice green one already hooked up. We're also gonna try a red and a blue and see what happens. All right, let's go. Apart from some rain, even at this distance, the beam was easy to see. So it was just a matter of going out to where that laser was aimed and taking yet another photo of it hitting our target. However, before we get to the results, I've done some maths based on our previous measurements. Don't worry, I'm not gonna bore anyone with it. But our red laser should give us a spot size of 25 centimeters. We fired the red laser and what do you know? It fits pretty much across the whole grid, which is what we expected. Yes, it's not perfect, but for a simple experiment that is utilizing a one milliwatt laser that isn't even producing a high quality beam, I think that's not bad given the circumstances. One of the factors that comes into divergence is wavelength. The color of the laser will affect the degree of divergence. 
shorter wavelengths or bluer light will diverge less than longer wavelengths or redder light. So, with a bit more maths, that gives us a spot size of 21 centimeters for our green laser. And so, let's go fire the laser and see if that's the case. So, if the grid is 25 centimeters across, the laser should be this wide. Not too bad, but why isn't it perfect? Well, I've made several assumptions. The main one being that I'm accurately measuring the spot size. At 270 meters, even with the use of a tripod, the laser spot was still moving around a bit. So we had to rely on the camera to give us an accurate measurement for size. But given that I was using different cameras with different apertures, in different light settings, different exposures, it all played a part that made it less than ideal. If you wanted to be super accurate, then you use a power meter and map out the entire spot. I also tried this with the blue laser, and though it had definitely spread out, it was hard to get any accurate results because the beam quality wasn't that great. Cool pattern though. So, was this test successful? Well, I'd say yes. We set out to show where the laser beams do diverge, and we got exactly that. Not only were our calculations in rough agreement with our results, but when you compare what we got at 10 centimeters with what we got at 270 meters, there is no doubt that laser beams do diverge. I'd call that a success. Remember, I'm almost a doctor, and until next time, be like a proton. Stay positive. Yeah.